So good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Green morning, green afternoon, and green evening to everybody world over, wherever you are. We extend you yet another very powerful evening as far as India is concerned. But when I talk to my brothers and sister right over here in Canada, United States, Latin America, it's early morning, and there's a little different time zone. Somebody is for the morning walk, morning jog. Somebody is having cup of coffee, cup of tea, and some of us, those are having a wonderful deliberations. How to keep your health and wellness fine, and at the same time your business going on. Ladies and gentlemen, today during this COVID-19 pandemic, it is 138th webinar, making education relevant. It's a global confluence of educators, motivators, entrepreneurs, counselors, technocrats. And this particular program is being brought basically to bring all the different stakeholders on a common platform. So from Canada, Latin America, and United States, let me take you where the people have just finished their lunch in the entire Europe. All our brothers and sisters are right over there. So we extend you a very warm welcome. Those are joining us over there. Uh, most of you prefer I always wonder because younger generation, my middle-aged generation, and the, of course, elderly people, we always feel like coming on the Facebook Live that is on ICSI, International Chamber for Service Industry, and Dr. Bulshan Sharma's page. Open your watch parties, wherever you are. We are going to have a very, very vibrant and a very meaningful evening. Let me share a couple of slides with you, and thereafter I'll get today's distinguished guest, Mr. Sanjeeva Shivesh. He is doing a wonderful work, a very innovative work, an entrepreneurial work, and how basically he is developing the new startup ecosystem in entire India. We will be talking in a little while. Let me share a couple of slides quickly. So in Europe, we have just finished with your lunch. Hold on for your cup of coffee and tea. In between, we are there for a short while. We will discuss, deliberate, is education, ecosystem empowerment, water conservation, global wellness, micro, small, and medium enterprise, India, ASEAN partnership together, what we are taking. So our chamber, which is dedicated to the non-resident Indians, 1994 to 2003, it was totally Punjabi Parvasi Divas initially and 2003 onwards Bharatiya Parvasi Divas and confluence of 30 million plus non-resident Indians world over in different countries. We know the Europe has suffered quite a bit, the Italy, the UK, the France, the Spain, and when we talk about now Sweden and a couple of other countries in that area, but we hope that you're taking care of yourself and you're taking care of your family, your neighbors, your friends, your community, during the lockdown, ladies and gentlemen, thought processes are affected. Business is deeply affected. Physical and mental health is affected. And the main part of the universe is education is deeply affected. And some of us are already thinking because artificial intelligence is coming in a very big way. But from India, from the soil of India, whether you are in Canada, you are in US, you are in Latin America, you are in Europe, a lot of people joining us from Central Asia also, Uzbekistan, Kazakhstan, Turkmenistan, Kyrgyzstan. And when we come to South Asia, people join us from Afghanistan, Bhutan, Sri Lanka, Maldives, Nepal. And in ASEAN countries, the economy which is developing very fast, we talk about those 10 beautiful economies, Myanmar, Cambodia, Laos, Singapore, Malaysia, Thailand, Indonesia, Philippines, Brunei, and Vietnam. All the 10 countries. And of course, I go a little further. Middle East, we have got a lot of people from Saudi Arabia, we have got people from Doha, Qatar, Oman, Abu Dhabi, Sharjah, Dubai, Kuwait. We extend you a very warm welcome for having joined us over here. And Dr. Christy Chang, we are so grateful. It's quite late at present in Taiwan and in South Korea, but still you are very keen to know because you want to help your youth over there, how they can become entrepreneur and what they can do. So, ladies and gentlemen, from India, from the soil of India, they always treat everybody world over, one globe, one continent, one country, one family, all of us, we are together, wherever we are. It's a Vasudev Kutumbakam. One world, one love, one family. Your happiness is 
their and our happiness in together. Heartiest congratulations to India for you know, bringing in the new education policy which has come in India 2020, being announced on 29th of July, just a month and a plus couple of days. But it's a wonderful move which has been done. And as we read more and more of this policy, the entrepreneurship is going to play a very important role because vocational skills, competencies, and internship, and all the things whatsoever is coming up with the corporate sector and academias together, I think it's going to do wonder. Now, Monday to Sunday, our chamber, Monday to Sunday, you have rightly heard, not Monday to Friday. There is no Saturday, Sunday holiday. Rather, Saturday, we have got four webinars. Sunday, we have got four webinars. So Saturday, Sunday is more occupied. It's rather you have got more time and we come Monday to Friday from 7 to 8 p.m. Indian Standard Times. Now, what is the purpose? What is the objective? How to empower school education, higher education, university education, technical education, engineering, management, whatever we talk about. And with education, what skills are required? What competencies are required? As the artificial intelligence is coming in a very big way, we got to understand the youth got to be prepared for entrepreneurship. On 15th of July, youth empowerment strategies, because it's the world skills when we talk about this particular day. So we started a wonderful journey on that day. And one month we were totally dedicating to youth empowerment strategy. Now coming further, we also take on one agenda every evening, four to five children and under the women empowerment, they come and they share their views quickly for about a minute or two. And they say how to save water at home, in school, in college, in university, in public places, in retail malls, in your working places, corporate sector, wherever, how the every drop of water has to be saved. That is something very important. Jal hi jeevan hai. Jal sanrakshan is very, very important for all of us. Women empowerment, yes. When you educate a male member, you educate an individual. But when you educate female child, you educate seven to eight subsequent generations. So that's why our focus is on women empowerment world over wherever we are. Monday to Thursday, you get the speakers. Those are coming and giving the new pedagogies, andragogies, vision, creativity, collaboration, innovation, critical thinking, analytical thinking, logical thinking, whatever you want to call design thinking, whatever you want to give the name, term, coin, it's up to you. But every Friday evening, we bring the confluence of Buddhist community from the world over, and they talk about what is Buddha's teachings relevance when we talk about today's education ecosystem. And then comes Saturday evening, Ministry of Ayush, Ayurveda for the global wellness, yoga, meditation, naturopathy, nutrition, organic. It's your lifestyle. If you're mentally robust, physically, you will not have any problem. I am now 70 year plus, but the energy I carry that of 20 year old boy, it's all my lifestyle. I get up at 3.30 and I sleep after this webinar. Throughout my life, vegetarian, anti-totaler, you think positive, you talk positive, you dream positive, laugh, smile, be happy, whatever is happening. There are certain things within your control. There are certain things beyond your control. That philosophy, once you adopt in life. So ladies and gentlemen, do take care of your health and wellness. That something is very important. Then comes Sunday morning. Sunday morning, 9.30, Professor Satender Diman comes all the way from the United States, from the Woodbury University, Burbank, Los Angeles, California. And he talks to us, Vidya Se Adhyatam Vidya Ki Aur, an integrative series of Srimad Bhagavad Gita and 10 principal Upanishad. What is the relevance of Indian ancient education right from Nalanda in today's ecosystem and education system? why people are having more psychological, physical, and wellness problems today as compared to vis-a-vis -vis that time. And then comes Sunday evening, 5 p.m., we take you to 650 million population, and that is all the ASEAN countries together, where we get the people, and you just had the deliberations and celebrations and congratulations, all the people together, those were in India, ASEAN, but with a special focus in India, on the eight beautiful states that's called Northeast India. And right starting from Tripura, Manipur, Assam, Meghalaya, 
and then we come to arunachal pradesh nagaland mizoram and sikkim all the eight states beautiful in india and of course sunday evening we travel with mr ravindranath ji the former cmd of the nsic and that is micro small and medium enterprise it's a very humble efforts from our side three years we had been moving to the ministry of micro small and medium enterprise whether it was uh, the honorable uh, secretary uh, panda ji dr panda ji or ram mohan mishra ji and all the stakeholders over there in the ministry we had been meeting them and we had been telling them that the services sector has to be brought a uh, par with the manufacturing sector we are very happy to note that now the manufacturing and services sector are given the same treatment by the ministry of micro small and medium enterprise although during this pandemic services are suffering quite a bit and a lot of people have got startups this evening is dedicated with this gentleman who has come as a resource source and he is going to give a new shot and he is going to give new empowerment to the entire edu education and when we talk about the ecosystem of the youth all of you those are interested to start something at your own as a startup we will talk about it but this journey and this celebrity and this distinguished guest this evening has come with the efforts of colonel anil kumar pokhrial that is the management and entrepreneurship and professional skill council that is sector skill council under the aegis of ministry of skill development and entrepreneurship and all the time overseas over here we wonder when we talk about ministry of skill development and entrepreneurship skill development there are 37 or 38 sector skill council now the time has come let's focus on entrepreneurship entrepreneurship is future that is tomorrow because lots of people are going to be having a difficulty our chamber is available in the service because different continents different time zones morning till evening so morning 9 o'clock we start and evening 9 o'clock we finish those of you those are interested to get any kind of input and we would like the whole world as a one family as a vasudev kutumbakam to be benefited to be given advantage we do not need only the living skills we need the life management apne jeevan ko kaise guzarna hai apne jeevan ko kaise aage leke chalna hai now almost about 149 countries together when we got the research inputs from our stakeholders our research teams the chamber has come out with from 25th of march to 31st of august the golden triangle is not going to be delhi agra jaipur there is going to be a birth to the new golden triangle and b2b will be no more business to business you got to call it back to basics of life if we want the humanity to survive ladies and gentlemen the basic food the food necessity your nutrition and we have started growing our own vegetables now for the next one month on my rooftop in my residence there is no place available where i have not grown the vegetables grow your own vegetables have your own basic necessities and needs don't depend on government for everything and outside resources and sources survive in less whatever you can consume less that would be better second part lots of people they devote time 99% working on the, their body their body packs and everything what is needed is you need a mental toughness you need a mental robustness you need something in your mental faculty because if you are mentally robust you will be able able to overcome the corona or whatsoever it is so second in the golden triangle is health and wellness and the third part very important is the entire education fraternity ecosystem is going to change now ladies and gentlemen the children are going to ask what is the purpose of this subject why do i study which way do i study is it going to be in the four uh, bricks wall where inside the classroom or it's going to be outside the classroom or it's going to be a flipped learning or digital learning or technology based learning or blended learning or it's going to be entrepreneurship based learning it's going to be skill based learning it's going to be competency based learning all components that is being taken care of in the new education policy if that is being implemented in totality wonders can be done on the soil of india this is the last slide before i introduce my four little girls and today's distinguished guest ladies and gentlemen this is a beautiful saying whenever i read 
and I listen in the morning when I get up, I listen to the Napoleon Hill. I lost recently one of my friends that is, uh, you know, Sir Ken Robinson, the policy strategist on the education. And his book was Do School Skill Creativity? And there was a death valley. And similar way, if you go to Dr. Subhata Mitra, you will come to know that what exactly happens. And he did a lot of experiments. Do see his videos also. So we come to the Napoleon Hill and what he says, whatsoever human mind can conceive and believe it can achieve. Let's come together. Let's make education relevant. Let's teach only that which has got some application in life. Let's give only that much to the children. Today's millennials are very creative. They have come to this world with a gadget. If God meets me once, I would say, can you make me 15 year old once again so that I get back to the school and I can be a smart, young entrepreneur because today, ladies and gentlemen, through this relevance, rest of my life, I've decided from this chamber, all of us together, making education relevant. Teach only what is desirable. Give only that much which is digestible. Give that which is relevant. So it's a global confluence of educators, motivators, technocrats, counselors, wellness experts, corporate, administrators, decision makers. So all of us together from the world over. That is the way we started a humble journey. I remember 1994 and that is the way we have moved on. So all of us together. This evening, we are going to have the four young pillars when we talk about, let's save every drop of the water, we have got Rachna, we have got Shrija, and we have got Riddhi, and we have got Vaishnavi. Vaishnavi is going to get a special award because she was the first to log in at 6.45. So, Colonel Casey Manon, we are grateful to you. You are the regional advisor in India, in South India, for International Chamber for Service Industry. All the principals, educators, headmasters, teachers, if you want your girls to participate anywhere from the world, you are requested to kindly send your mail to this Colonel Saab. He's the one who is taking care of this entire thing. And girls, we would request you, my little children, kindly open your Facebook accounts. Kindly open your Facebook page. Come on the Dr. Gulshan Sharma's page. Send a request to all your friends. Open the watch party. Knowledge is not only to be preserved, and to be conserved and to be kept with you only, knowledge and wisdom is always to be shared globally. Hamare Bharat se bahut sare Ayurvedist apne saath pethi lekar chale gaye aur wo cheez bahar se ghoom ke ab wapis patent ho ke India mein wapis a rahi hai. And when it comes from outside, we say, wow, what a nice packaging and what a nice thing. I would make a humble request to each one of you. I believe in now as I have traveled the world over and more and more I have traveled, it has made me more humble. The world is, let's give as much as we can because once you go to the graveyard, nothing goes with you. Silence only goes and your good deeds, whatsoever you leave behind, that only remains back. Mani Karnika ka gana zarur sunyega. Happiness if you want in life, Music therapy is the most important for education ecosystem. Desh se hai pyaar to har pal ye kehna chahiye. Main rahu ya na rahu, Bharat ye rehna chahiye. Sil sila ye baad mere yun hi chalna chahiye. Main rahu ya na rahu, Bharat ye rehna chahiye. That should be the ecosystem and the philosophy. You got to spread the fragrance from India world over because that's very important. The first residential university, Nalanda, it was established in India. 10,000 students from world over, 2,000 Acharya. Or waha ke jo darwan the, wo pehla interview lete the. And the other day, I was going during this pandemic, one of the article, it was so interesting. Ek darwan ne kisi bachche se poocha, kyunki pehle interview mein, eh, apne baare mein batao. So that man looked towards darwan and he told, sir, who am I? Ki main kaun Mujhe nahi pata hai. Well, yehi seekhne aaya hoon. So, ladies and gentlemen, this evening, what a pleasure to have Mr. Sanjeeva Shiveshi. He is the founder the entrepreneurship school in India in Gurugram.
it's a launch pad for these startups ladies and gentlemen this person when i just deliberated for a short while i felt so energetic and happy having met him he is a serial entrepreneur and angel investor he wears multiple hats he started his professional journey as a civil servant that means like ias ips irs and indian railway service so he was with the government of india working over there and he worked at the various positions in the indian railways then he moved to fire capital fund as executive director where he was responsible for private equity investments in 2009 he took the entrepreneurial plunge to start smart wave an educational education and consultancy firm in 2010 he also started lmr connect for providing outsourced infra management services in 2013 he started the entrepreneurship school where he nurtures people who want to become entrepreneurs he has incubated more than 100 startups great great pleasure i clap for you at uh, the entrepreneurship school he also works with the micro small and medium enterprises in india uk usa and singapore in 2016 he started predica technologies for the global it services in 2017 he started shatadri 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 a data driven policy think tank in 2019 he started accelerator venture partners which is an angel platform for startup investments his passion lies in the entrepreneurship innovation design thinking economics public policy and constitutional development he has taught courses at several universities including singapore management university mdi gurugram fms delhi university terry university and conducted several faculty development programs he also split his time as advisor to the sector skill council which i told you which is looking after entrepreneurs with colonel uh, anil pokhrial a sector skill council advisor to the land ports authority of india and a strategic advisor to avalex scooters and motorcycle he is a regular panelist on cnn news 18 and other national channels on economic affairs ladies and gentlemen this is a very special evening this is a wonderful evening because the future is going to be where basically entrepreneurship is going to play very important role world over in all the economies and when we talk about micro small and medium enterprise when we talk about startups when we talk about stand ups or whatever you want to talk about in that you have got right over here and we drop the curtains and we extend a very hearty welcome to shri sanjeeva shivesh ji what a pleasure to have him it's it's a great pleasure it's a great evening thanks for joining us it's a pleasure to have you with us first of all uh, i'm said there's, there's such a long cv and a bio data and a curriculum of yours you have done so many permutation combinations uh, let's first take a little journey of your personal then we come to your institute and then we talk about your startups uh, one by one i'll keep giving first let's talk about your various ventures which you took year to year and how you moved on let's work on to that because you are a true entrepreneur and you are developing the startups and and, and i'm say when i talk about serial entrepreneur there's a so much to learn and so much to share from you yes dr gulshan please I'm truly humble to be here, and I, uh, you know, I'm delighted and humbled. And uh, 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 thank you for the kind and very generous introduction uh, uh, about my life and career. Tell me uh, what's the question that you have, and then uh, I would be more than happy to, to sort of uh, take. I really think, uh, Doctor Saab, that uh, that uh, uh, the best way to describe life is is to keep failing right and the more you fail uh, the more lines get added on your cv right which means that you fail and then you try for the second time so second time a second line gets added then you uh, you fail there then you try again then the third line gets added 
you fail again, you try again, your fourth line gets added. So I would say that my life has been a journey of uh, multiple failures, but I've been very fortunate, uh, I would consider, that, uh, that uh, uh, I got so much of opportunity. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, that's, uh, I would call, uh, uh, great karma, right? So because you spoke about India and Indian culture, and uh, I think uh, it is, uh, it is uh, uh, your karma, your belief that keeps on coming back to you again and again. And it keeps on providing uh, opportunities uh, uh, that you like and uh, then keep uh, trying it out. And that's perhaps the making or call it the DNA of an entrepreneur, not necessarily the full DNA of an entrepreneur, but parts of the DNA of, a, of an entrepreneur, right? Uh, which is about trying, it's about dreaming, uh, trying, doing, failing, trying, doing, failing. And that cycle I've been able to live multiple times. <laughs> that's great. That's, that's a wonderful way of packaging. Okay. And uh, let's come to your present setup, what you have got an institution in India, in Gurugram. What exactly Gee. it is? And I've got a small request. You've got to bring your mic a little bit because some of the people, they are telling me, yeah. they are finding it difficult to, because, uh, yes, yes. Thank you. Can you hear me properly? Yeah. yeah. Am I audible? It is yeah. better. It is better. It is right. better. So, yeah, I'll, I'll do that. No, I'm better. Yeah. So, uh, look, uh, uh, I run a very small school, although we call ourselves as the entrepreneurship school. But uh, in terms of whenever people come to our place, they keep on finding where the school is, right? And that happens with the school of life. Uh, life is a teacher. Uh, on its own, and we find it very hard to find a school in the school of life. Uh, uh, so it, it is metaphorical, but in reality, uh, what we have uh, been able to achieve is uh, is we are a garage school of entrepreneurship, right? So when I say garage school of entrepreneurship, it is very different from uh, uh, a very heavy infrastructure model of learning and schooling, right? So, uh, and that's uh, shocking to a lot of people that, uh, you know, there are no classrooms. We have only uh, two classrooms, right? Uh, and most of the time, these classrooms are hardly occupied. But what happens is uh, we uh, work with our ventures. We go to them wherever they are and, uh, and start, co start dirtying our hands together in their ventures. So for example, right now when I'm speaking with you, it is not my school, it is not my office. I'm speaking from the office of one of our ventures, right? And, oh. and, 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 and in that sense, I'm very fortunate that today I can claim that in India, right, I would have about, uh, about 70, 80 offices. I, I am able to walk into multiple offices. Uh, uh, I'm fortunate, right? Uh, uh, but the real learning happens at the place of work. And our job is fairly simple. We work with few people who, who decided to build ventures, right? And we sort of work with them to help them realize their dreams, their ambition, and make those ventures uh, successful. Very often they are not, right? And that's the, that's the nature of uh, uh, the beast, that uh, 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 entrepreneurship is inherently risky. It is, uh, as I said, a process of experimentation trial and error is a process where if you run one experiment and if you don't, if you've not uh, designed it well, uh, the risk of failure and the, uh, and, and the way it plays out could be, could, be, could be very complicated and hard on the people who are behind uh, those experiments. So what we do is we work with them and we want to make those experiments better. Now, uh, and we don't want to claim anything that we, we, we are experts in making those experiments better. What we have done is we have been able to do similar experiments about three to 400 times, which doesn't mean that we are now better uh, at running the next experiment, but uh, uh, we are trying to bring that consolidated learning as a team to the new experiment which is being designed. So, 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 so that's the learning. We are trying to codify the knowledge of building entrepreneurs. It is, it is uh, as new as 
uh, where science was in 1830s or 1840s or 1850s right so so uh, so so that's the the lag between codified knowledge and the 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 knowledge which is available in the world so 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 that's the work small work that we are trying to do but it's phenomenally uh, enjoyable okay uh, what would you like to tell the younger generation today let's talk about uh, the youth those are interested to become entrepreneurs so there are some qualities which we already have rather they already have some qualities they got to acquire to become an entrepreneur so you have got various programs which you are offering i have gone through your website in detail i found one day to 10 day then three months then six months then nine months then one year there are a couple of programs yeah. i saw over there yeah. first of all uh, first of all uh, uh, i mean to say what what do you feel that the younger generation okay let me go one question before that today's younger generation say let's work smart not work hard so what do you have to say on that the people those believe in this philosophy can they also come on entrepreneurship side work smart uh, but I, work hard uh, so it's a tough one right and i, I meet people who who uh, who are much smarter and uh, very often we confuse uh, hard work for smart work right so uh, very often uh, i think the words uh, uh, can convey different uh, you know images in the minds of different people but in my mind it's fairly clear right uh, there is no success without solid hard work right so so which doesn't mean that uh, you don't need to be working smart so smart working is important but to me a solid hard work is a precondition to any success it is it is uh, it is a long journey of life and the definition of success Uh, is very individualized right so my interpretation of word success is different from my colleagues interpretation of word success it's about those journeys that we want to take now uh, once we know once we are able to picture what success is then after that it's all about uh, about uh, uh, actually chasing those mad dreams we call all our people mavericks right and if you're not a maverick it's very difficult to chase any of those dreams so 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 uh, and chasing dreams which are let's say uh, 10 years down in life right it cannot happen without passion right it cannot happen without solid hard work so 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 it it and inevitably all entrepreneurial journeys are of that nature it's like expedition if you have to if you have to go to uh, let's say uh, uh, if if the year was 1900 and you were planning an expedition to south pole you had to prepare for 10 years to make that journey of 6 months right uh, if you have to go to mars you have to prepare for 5 years to do that undertake the journey of 12 months and that's like on the entrepreneurship journey and and the uh, uh, hard work is a precondition smart work is desirable it is important you require a lot of smart people around you it's not necessary that you do all the stuff yourself right so the smartness lies in integrating all the available resources in the society which is which is there but you just cannot offload the hard work to anyone else that has to come from you and you alone wonderful wonderful so well said so well said now are there any prerequisites required in some youngsters those are interested to become startup are there any prerequisites are there certain qualities are there certain yeah. ingredients which they should already possess because then you do the hand holding and you help them out some basic mm-hmm. acumen which is required if somebody is going to join the armed forces so physically they got to be fit they got to be running they got to be mentally alert they got to believe in couple of things so similar right. way from your side what yeah. prerequisites you feel that somebody has to become an entrepreneur okay uh, so dr gulshan i am a eternal optimist and in, uh, in that sense i really believe that everything in life can be learned and in oh. the, uh, right so 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 i wouldn't say that uh, you know it's a, a dna thing or i wouldn't say that uh, Uh, you necessarily need to have uh, uh, 
a, a certain amount of skills or competencies to be an entrepreneur, but uh, it requires a learning mindset. It requires a mindset which uh, Dr. Robinson, you spoke about uh, in your uh, in your opening address about uh, how school skills creativity, right? So, so Dr. Robinson talks about, and that's about learning mindset. It's about the mindset which questions. It's about curiosity, right? So, so nothing happens if I'm not curious. Curiosity is a starting point, right? So, uh, uh, the question is. Do you need a person who's curious before he wants to become an entrepreneur or you need to build curiosity in him such that he can undertake journeys of entrepreneurship? And when I say I'm an eternal positive optimist, I really want to believe that everything in the world is learnable, right? It's only a question of time, commitment and, and creating the right process mindset models and the definitions uh, that we have in the conventional world. And let me explain to you, right? Uh, the way I see things. Uh, today, there is so much of focus on the word called success, when the only thing which is guaranteed is faith, right? Uh, uh, and everyone is looking and wants to be successful in the way society wants to describe success. Now, uh, as I believe, Success to me is something that I dreamt of and I wanted to achieve. To have society, if society has not been able to dream it, or society has not been able to understand the same way I understood that word, right? Uh, and in that sense, uh, entrepreneurs are challengers. They are able to challenge conventionally heard held uh, norms, beliefs, wisdom, and then they push the society forward. So, 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 so that's simple. Uh, now, all this can happen provided I have something which I, which everyone calls, and we also call, uh, call the learning mindset, the openness to learn. Right? When I say openness to learn, it is about trying things out, believing in possibilities, doing, and failing, and learning from every failure. Without failure, there is no learning. Right? But, but. Uh, but there is no glorification of failure. There's glorification of success. But every success hinges on those million failures. Okay. Okay. Wonderful. Wonderful. So well said and so well packaged the entire thing. Now, uh, with artificial intelligence coming in, uh, particularly into the entire ecosystem of the universe, uh, you are the best combination when I look at one thing. You have done IIT Delhi also. And you have done the management also. You have tasted India also, and you have tasted UK also. And then, of course, various other projects uh, you have undertaken. Now, just tell me the present scenario as far as India is concerned. Secondly, how fast, how quick, how soon artificial intelligence is coming world over, and how the younger generation should adapt something related to entrepreneurship, new avenues, new ventures. Okay. Uh, so, uh, Dr. Wilson, I might not be the most competent person, but let me try and, uh, let me try and uh, hazard a uh, uh, few thoughts around the question. Now, so, so, so we are in the world of artificial intelligence. There's no denying, right? So, so uh, and the journey started uh, a few years back, uh, maybe about 15, 20 years back, and uh, those terabytes and super terabytes of information which uh, got gathered through internet and various IT systems of the world, they are now ready to be processed. So, so but that itself is not artificial intelligence. It's about uh, building ability in machine to learn on itself. Now, if machine has got, let's say, only iota of uh, available uh, total learning in the world, uh, artificial intelligence would be only a fraction of that. And, and because it's learning very fast, so uh, it will be able to catch up whatever is there on the IT systems or in the form of digitized uh, zero ones uh, uh, format uh, uh, and learn. However, uh, it's a long journey, right? And if I, if I start looking at all the journeys of uh, uh, long developments in world, when I say, uh, say uh, revolutions. So, so say, think of industrial revolution, which was 
uh, a big revolution or uh, information revolution, which was again a big revolution. And uh, things which started in 1980s, right, uh, or 76 is still continuing and uh, we still live in the age of uh, information revolution. So it's about 40 to 45 years and it's continuing. Now, AI is the part of this long wave of information revolution. And each of those revolutions in history, if you look, it takes several years. It, it, it could take about hundreds of years, right? So, so if you think in terms of industrial revolution, it took about uh, 70, 80, uh, 90, 100 years for uh, various forms of industries to evolve, to spread, and to move to every nook and corner of the world, and to find right use cases. The same is the uh, 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 the same is going to be true with AI, right? So uh, we are at the early stage of uh, artificial intelligence and uh, uh, the journey is going to take long. Although there are, uh, there are uh, uh, you know, experts who, who have predicted that, uh, you know, that man and machine are going to become one, right? And there's a date which is set in history, right? So Ray Kurzweil said that uh, 2045 and the man and machine becomes one. Uh, right, uh, so 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 that's going to uh, some part of it going is going to uh, become true, uh, but the next 20, 25 years is going to be super exciting because uh, all of us, you, me, youngsters, everyone who's listening who's listening to uh, this webcast uh, in any part of the world, they are going to be part of the journey, right? And they are going to 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 add to the to to the contribute to the to the enhancement of artificial intelligence right and to build up new cases which is going to become to make the world uh, easier right and, and when i say easier in the sense everyone has start thinking in terms of uh, four or five keywords which i love uh, faster better cheaper more so so can i do something with the use of uh, machine uh, 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 machine intelligence to make my life faster, better, cheaper, more. And if I start asking that question, then possibilities emerge. And those possibilities are going to manifest itself into multiple areas of uh, human life, right? So, so last uh, uh, fortnight, we had Elon Musk impregnate, uh, you know, uh, a chip on the brain of a pig, yeah. right? And, and that... Uh, seems to be one of you know uh, the inflection points right when 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 the curve uh, uh, should change so it's it's it is the starting of the inflection point we don't know when, whether uh, when will it change right so so uh, for that chip is only going to mimic uh, the way uh, a pig sees the world and the pig processes information and then the then uh, everyone is assuming that then that chip becomes smarter and then, uh, you know, the, the, some sort of uh, uh, a chip driven pigs would be coming and, uh, you know, going around the world. Okay. Now, 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 that's one use case and th that experiment could still take about two years to three years or maybe five years to, to fructify. And, and then you sort of move to other animals which are at different levels of or a higher level of intelligence. From pigs, you can move to giraffes, to monkeys, to maybe... So, so that's the journey. And that journey is going to be, uh, you know, someone has started it. So definitely some of those journeys are going to end with uh, the society and uh, humankind becoming far more knowledgeable. Okay. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. It was so, so, so well. You covered the entire thing. Now yours is the entrepreneurship uh, school when you talk about. So uh, there are three segments of the economy. You've got agriculture you've got manufacturing and you've got services sector. The new startups which are coming up uh, in India, uh, is there any particular sector which is growing faster or is there any particular sector in which the youngsters or the youth are more keen about it? And uh, is your entrepreneur school is focusing on any particular area because you have got so many startups you have given uh, birth to new startups. You have established new startups. You have given the oxygen to startups. So something we would like to know from you, how in India the scenario is at this point of time? 
Right. Uh, so from pure uh, stats perspective, and we have not done a very hard analysis, but I'm only going by my gut feel. So, so, so most startups in India got built in the area of services, right? So whether uh, think in terms of Flipkart, think in terms of Snapdeal or any of the, you know, the big bang uh, startups, right? Uh, but to say that this startup was only pure services, it could be misnomer, right? So there's a huge bit of, bit of technology, uh, a huge amount of products which are integrated in those services and and so 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 i see a lot of well integrated service domain startups right so call it uh, ola ola uber uh, swiggies milk baskets all those sort of stuff so they are well integrated uh, services startup they are making lives easier right uh, they are not manufacturing things like a, a, as, a, as in the case but today i'm sitting in a in a startup uh, right now which is uh, into electric vehicles right so so that's uh, uh, an emerging area where manufacturing takes uh, uh, is core to making these startups successful right and that's a big opportunity because today uh, 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 when the whole world and you spoke uh, quite a lot uh, which i really like the green world welcome to the green world right so if we if we are really looking at a world which is greener than today's world right we are forged you know in some way uh, the world is debating that uh, whether lockdown was good or bad for the environment right uh, just because uh, uh, this diwali could be presumably cleaner than every other diwali in ncr right so people are not uh, okay so so which means that uh, there was a problem there was a problem of pollution there was a problem coming out from emissions in the form of engines and uh, you know burning of uh, gasoline and those sort of stuff now now obviously the world has been trying to figure out a new direction in terms of electric vehicles and that's a huge opportunity and, and and that opportunity is still in its in its infancy in india not even in fancy its nascency in india right so uh, and we need to 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 move you know we need to uh, we need to be moving fast in that direction so there are countries which have uh, moved very fast and they have gone ahead uh, right uh, i don't want to name countries but they have done really done well and we really need to bring in uh, those technologies uh, in there so that's the manufacturing bit and in manufacturing there are a number of opportunities but we are not doing enough right as an economy we are not a manufacturing focused manufacturing rewarding economy which is uh, uh, the real challenge the, and we are not able to see too many uh, manufacturing related startups or we are not able to see too many product related startups which are inherently far more riskier than service related startups right uh, so so if you look at uh, the west or china they have invested the society the government the, the entire ecosystem has invested in product related startups where the investments are going to be 100x higher and also the failures are going to be 20x higher right so as country we also need to focus on that and build uh, do things to build product ecosystems and where we have not done it the 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 other point which you make is very very important and uh, considering agriculture comprises 15% of india's economy uh, uh, and it is transforming super fast we are not able to see as much of hunger or as much of activity in the agri related sector so there are startups i meet youngsters who are doing agri related startup but i think the opportunities are far more we still need to be doing a lot more in the area of uh, again agri product seed genetic engineering and those sort of stuff bio fertilizers uh, uh, so so those are the product based things which are going to happen uh, should happen in agri but we have left most of it uh, uh for the big boys right so a lot of uh, innovation uh, is driven by the big boys of the agri industry which means that people youngsters who you know ideally they are the challengers to the to to the big boys now we would be happy to be looking at youngsters who want to say that they want to challenge every big boy who are in the field of agriculture and this is opportunity but we need more youngsters to be to be coming forward and uh, with the courage of conviction and, and and the knowledge of technology to say that i am going to 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 do this and we'll be happy to incubate uh, such startup in agri services we are able to see some startup but it is not as uh, what do you call uh, uh, dispersive as we would want it to be right so so it has to be uh, spread in 
in all the geographies or uh, mac, uh, you know uh, micro economies uh, or uh, you know agri uh, small small uh, you know regions uh, in india but it is concentrated on few few parts so it is more concentrated in maharashtra karnataka tamil nadu and less concentrated in uttar pradesh bihar and uh, where there are more farmers so i think uh, uh, that disparity needs to be uh, we we sh- should encourage more uh, startups uh, in the states where agriculture is still playing a dominant role uh, to come up is it due to lack of awareness among the younger generation about such uh, new ventures in agri agri based because uh, two sectors which comes to our mind one is uh, you well said and the golden triangle which we have also drawn agriculture the organic food the basic farming basic startup related to agri anything and yeah. second part is health and wellness we talked about and yeah. the third part is now also when we are deliberating we are talking we are coming from offshore all together a platform where the revenue is going all the way to different economy so these kind of a platforms also because education will also not get back to january february what it used to be the education has to move ahead now it has to the technology there was a beautiful book by alan toffler future shocks yeah this gentleman revised the book number of times and when he wrote that particular book and like you said at present i am sitting in one of the startups and from there addressing the whole globe global this particular program alan toffler worked in a factory as a worker for 5 years before writing that book i had gone between the lines of each and every word so similar way uh, where is the gap sir where is the gap is it lack of awareness it is lack of enthusiasm it is lack of hand holding what exactly is to be done because you have touched a very important global nerve because the food that is a basic thing which is required my son asked me one question and i was not in a position to reply at the age of 70 he asked me that there are national highways and there are state highways in india and you have got lots of tree plantation on both the sides why didn't we grow the fruits over there instead of just having ornamental plants the people those were walking during corona virus and during this lockdown to their respective residences they could have plucked the fruit from there eaten without depending on anybody and they would have moved ahead vasudev kutumbakam ka to prayas to wahin se hai so what i wish to learn from you is please give no, me i learned from you today and i think no, it's no. A, such a brilliant idea dr gulshan no, no. right uh, and uh, that's why uh, i'm a believer in the world ideas change the world so so the the example that you gave is something uh, you know it's a eye opener for every policy maker everyone who's sitting anywhere and everywhere right so why didn't we plant uh, fruit bearing trees instead of just ornamental plants so there's a value of ornamental plants but uh, there's also a uh, Uh, in the context of india and the context uh, that you just described the value of uh, fruit bearing uh, plants uh, and trees are far more high right uh, i uh, think as if it comes to uh, why uh, haven't uh, states like up bihar rajasthan etc uh, been able to do more right so it's a hard question it's not as hard a question the answer is fairly simple if states like uh, uh, maharashtra uh, tamil nadu uh karnataka could do it then why couldn't these guys do and the answer is uh, is in my mind the answer is fairly simple a politicians who were sleeping right because the voters never asked so both uh, so the, the blame is also on the voters right so as voter we never asked for it and the politician nev- never thought about it okay uh, so that's one number two i think it's uh, 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 it's awareness as an issue it's society uh, which is uh, which is uh, uh, you know i would say uh, there so the society which talks about entrepreneurship which values uh, entrepreneurship which values small ventures which values doing things on your own are the societies which progress forward so for example gujarat right i worked there and there i learned that uh, in a small place uh, 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 called bhavnagar uh, uh, you know every third or fourth person uh, was a business, had some sort of business 
right? It's a telling number, right? And no one is interested in any, anything called Sarkari job, right? Very few people. And if you go to, uh, if you go to Patna, if you go to Lucknow, if you go to Banaras, right? Uh, people are still uh, aspiring for a Sarkari job. Now, so, so, so where does this hunger for Sarkari job come? It comes from your own, um, the home that you live, the ecosystem that you live, uh, and the way society celebrates success. And then everyone says that society defines success only when you're IS, IPS, blah, 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 et cetera, right? Uh, it does not define success on if you have set up a small shop, right? So we really need to, to bring in those simple values back in those societies, okay? And till the time those simple values are brought back in those societies, the change will not come, okay? So if Prime Minister says Startup India, uh, the message of Startup India can reach the village of Gujarat, but it can get stumbled at the collectorate office of Muzaffarpur. It does not reach, it does not go beyond that. And someone has to break that communication uh, blockage, right? So the chief minister, the future chief ministers of Bihar and Uttar Pradesh, they have to wake up and then say, if prime minister says, then we have to say 10 times more for the message to reach the village. And, and till the time this messaging uh, uh, issue get resolved, uh, it's a long journey. So that's one. Uh, we need to work with the teachers, right? So the teachers are there uh, in these states who, who, who make, who are the opinion makers, who guide, who, who sow the seed and who, who, who lay the path. So we need to be uh, working with teachers and helping them understand this message, right? Uh, and, and, and make them believe that this is the way forward. This is the most powerful thing in the world, right? To, to be a job creator rather than a job seeker. Now, the messages are simple, but we need more advocates of such message in society. Only then the societies which are lagging in entrepreneurial indicators, they can move forward. Wonderful. Wonderful. So well said. So well said. You had such a long day. I don't want to hold you for my, these little girls, uh, you know, they, they can, I can take on the water management and water strategy with them. Just final word from your side, our chamber from overseas, from the different countries, with the different people, we would be more than happy because I still recall we had been going to the doors of the Ministry of Micro, Small and Medium Enterprise for good about three years, all the time talking about service industry and Ram Mohan Mishraji, the additional secretary over there, and along with him, uh, Dr. Arun Pandaji, and all those people we have been meeting. And they realized ultimately, and down the chain, all the officers sat together with them, the white paper, the blueprint, and the roadmap, whatever they wanted. The great soothing to us, at least, that the barrier has been removed. The manufacturing and the services has been brought at par now in the eyes of the micro, small, and medium enterprise. Now, we... Uh, have got lots of people, lots of youngsters. Those are interested to become startup. One final question I would take from you. Can you give a little journey? Let's take, there's a small boy or a girl who wants to become a startup, right? They, they want to become a startup, but they do not know how to go by. Of course, you have got your short term, uh, one day to 10 days programs, and you've got a couple of other programs and all. What do we have for the awareness Government has got, rightly said just now by you, government has got a lot of programs, a lot of opportunities, a lot of avenues. But I think people do not know. They are ignorant also. Children do not know where to reach, whom to reach, which way to reach, how to go to that particular place where from finally my dream, my vision can turn into reality. What do we do on that? Can, can you give a little uh, journey? Okay, fine. There's a small boy who is 15, 16 year old, he has done 17 year old, who has done his 12th class, and they, he or she is interested to become entrepreneur. <clears throat> so what journey, what route do they adopt? How do they go by? Right. Uh, look, uh, uh, Dr. Gulshan, uh, you know, uh, 
So there could be uh, multiple ways in which uh, these journeys could be taken, right? And I would not say that this is the final answer, but let me try and uh, think what would be the best ways. The, the genesis of every journey begins with an idea, right? So if I'm a 17-year-old uh, kid who's just, uh, you know, uh, passed out from, uh, completed my 12th class, uh, I really need to start thinking, what is the startup that I want to do? So what's the idea that I have in mind? Now that those ideas could be service idea, those could be manufacturing idea, those could be things around agriculture, it could be on healthcare, any, anything, right? So uh, I think everyone needs to start thinking about and, and start to make, start to get that dream as clear as possible, right? So idea is nothing but a dream. And the more you see that dream, it starts becoming clear. The clearer it gets, which means that we need to be asking, what is the core problem that I'm trying to solve, right? And ask that question at least five, six times, hard question at least five, six times. Have a, have a mentor, have a friend, have a, have a parent, discuss this with parent. Uh, discuss again and again with uh, with people around uh, you know people uh, around you could be uh, could be uh, shrugging off or dismissing your idea but but don't stop right so and that's your first test so so ask the hard question what is the big pain that you are trying to solve if after five six seven round of introspection if it looks like a great problem to solve then the second stage comes how do I need to solve this right so so from what you start asking, uh, uh, how do I need to solve this, right? So, uh, which is uh, in, in the more complex term, it could be a technical feasibility, right? So you start analyzing, is it feasible? It is not feasible. What technologies, what capabilities, what competencies would it require? And invariably this feasibility stage is a, is a, is a back and forth between a technology solutions and money available. Right? And somewhere you have to make the ends meet. And if you're not able to end the meet, then uh, you know, we really think that uh, uh, this is not possible and they discard the idea. But uh, if again, when I look at things from a possibilistic mindset, I often come to answers which can be made feasible. Right? So it's about dream big, start small. The real problem is when people dream big, they also start thinking about a factory which can make one lakh cars. It is not necessary, right? Uh, when you are dreaming big, start thinking of a factory which can make only two cars or maybe five cars. And then financially it becomes a more viable way of making things happen. So, so, so this uh, uh, back and forth iteration needs to happen and clarity starts coming only when you discuss again and again with people. Uh, if people uh, dissuade or, or dismiss you, 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 you don't need to feel uh, small, right? I think you are doing a great thing. I think you, uh, you know, uh, you, you should be doing a, uh, uh, you, you have a good problem at hand. It just means that you need to be more persistent and, and don't let it go. It takes time. No problem gets solved in, in, in one day or uh, 10 days or one month or three months. Uh, I'm discussing of journeys which are going to be at least 10 years uh, long journey, which means that uh, spend time solving, getting the big picture, and then that picture in as detail as possible. Wonderful. Wonderful. What a pleasure to have you, uh, Mr. Sanjeeva Siveshi. It was a wonderful, practical, heart-to-heart, soul-to-soul, mind-to-mind. It was not a communication. It was connecting with you. And uh, our chamber, International Chamber for Service Industry, on behalf of all the non-resident Indians, World over, we would like to convey our deep gratitudes and regards and thanks to you. And of course, in particular, uh, my, my, my youngster, the Sector Skill Council, Management and Entrepreneurship and Professional Skill Council, CEO, Colonel Anil Kumar Pokhrial, who was kind enough to put me across to you. And you were very kind to, we have taken all the points together. There is a long way to go. And I would like that our chamber should work very closely with you. And uh, we wish your The Entrepreneurship School 
and the entrepreneur school uh, a great journey big journey holding a hand helping the youth not only of india but the world over whosoever is interested and uh, with these words my deep gratitude and thanks to you you are sitting elsewhere that shows your passion your commitment and you came for this particular program i do not want to you know hold you any more on that thank you sanjeev ji i'm so grateful to you and i'm, I'm uh, indeed uh, delighted to be here and to have met you uh, online and to all the friends to your portal uh, uh, my sincere gratitude to all and happy to help connect anyone who wants to be on the journey of entrepreneurship people are watching you from day. people are watching you from the world over on the watch parties in the facebook <laughs> thank you very much great evening happy evening wonderful evening and god bless you and have a long long way to go to help every youth holding a hand of everyone who has a dream and who wants to be not only success even a failure now that make a difference that's something is new thing which we learned from you god bless you thank you sir thank you sir uh, it's a, it's a proud privilege so ladies and gentlemen after that let me get to my routine now and we request uh, uh, my child riddhi uh, you got to come on the forefront you got to be coming over here riddhi you got to unmute your mic child yes 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 good evening child good evening sir we hope that everybody is fine at your place and you're taking care of everybody or somebody is taking care of you <laughs> we taking care of each other okay great 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 so what would you like to convey on the water saving this evening okay um so i will be speaking about the effective methods to conserve water in public places okay okay so water is the essential com uh, component for sustenance of human race and letting it go down the drain without proper utilization is the action of a foolish person water is a finite commodity which can which if not managed properly will result in shortages in near future water conservation can go a long way to help us ease these impending shortages with everyone spent uh, spreading awareness about water conservation and an increase in price paid to use the same everyone is pushed to save water at least at home but what about public places such as public restrooms eateries water parks and other recreational facilities where water is wasted due to leaks low maintenance and careless usage you might argue by saying that public places are for uh, public places are the responsibility of the higher authority what can we do about it but that cliche line which says that every individual makes a difference is quite right the following are some uncomplicated ways to save water in public places closing taps when you see them open informing the higher authority on witnessing anything that can be fixed by them like leaks and cracks spreading awareness about using recycled water wherever possible planting drought resistant trees and plants in public areas will help us conserve water other minimalistic things can be used to beautify places instead of fountains which use up gallons of water we must support this notion and promote water conservation generally very good very good god bless you these kids are so intelligent so creative and so dynamic god bless all of you god bless your parents god bless your family take care of everybody around thank okay. you so much sir so thank you rachna take care sir thank you beta rachna good evening child good evening sir how are you child i'm fine how are you doing sir how is everybody at your place yeah everyone is fine here good very good so rachna yes. what do you want to what do you want to share with the universe this evening with regard to water saving because we all are going to have water crisis water shortage water problems okay today i'm going to speak about the effective measures you or tips which can be used in households to save water which has gained a lot of attention and which requires a lot of attention in this recent times first of all we need to start using water watering can for garden rather than a hose pipe a hose pipe consumes nearly 100 liters of water per hour mulching plants such as bark chippings extra compost or straw can be used and watering in the evenings or late afternoons or in the early morning helps to reduce the evaporation and save more water next step is fixing leaks 
leaky faucets dripping water from shower heads uh, rusting pipes are a few signs of water damages these needs to be located quickly and fixed immediately to prevent avoiding of to prevent more water wastage next is a uh, flushing tissues and other items usually we flush tissues and other items in the toilet this uh, creates water logging and ultimately leads to water wastage also we need to reduce number of times we flush the toilet before using unnecessary flushing of water leads to waste of up to 1000 liters of water per year next is we can use the dishes and laundry water again one of the easiest and quickest way to save water is by capturing the warm up water when we wash dishes or do any of your hand work hand washing in the laundry this can be easily achieved by placing a bowl or a bucket under the tap when we are using or doing our jobs and let the water run into the bowl to warm up this warm up water can then be used to rinse dishes or clothing or can be used for plants flush a toilet or even wash the dog without having to use more potable water if you intend to use this water for your garden or for your dogs then you should make sure that you are not using harsh chemicals while washing dishes or in the laundry processes the last tip is you do a short shower showers usually consume up to 6 to 10 liters of water per minute Thus, avoid long showers. Try to make it to ten to fifteen minutes. Some experts suggest aerated showers, which combine water and air, or insulating a regulator in the shower, which puts an upper limit in the flow of rains. One more tip is that we can use buckets instead of heavy showering. Thus, these these were a few tips of um, saving water in households. Thank you, thank you, thank you. God bless you. Thank please, you, sir. Please take care of everybody in your family, your neighbors, your community, your relatives. And you know, I want to tell you also, Riddhi also, Shreja also, and Vashnavi also. God has given you today an opportunity through Colonel Manan to come for this particular program. When you are going global and world over, people are seeing you. You must come all of you regularly for these programs. listen to others also share the information because you are all the future of the world you kids are going to do wonders in coming time beta okay all the best god bless you shrija we will surely do that sir okay shrija good evening shrija ha ah, shrija can you hear me otherwise i go to the next good evening, yes good evening child how are you I'm good, sir. How are you, sir? Good evening. Everybody is fine at your place. Everybody is fine at your place. Yes, sir. Fine, sir. Good, good. So, Shrija, what would you like to tell the global community today on water saving? Because we all understand there's going to be a shortage sure. of water. There's going to be a crisis of water. Already, we have got so much of. <clears throat> problems with the consumable water so what what would you like to suggest shrija go ahead go ahead so um, good evening all good evening to everybody i am shrija and i will be talking about effective ways to save water in educational institutions every day we come across newspapers that prompts us just how severe the environmental crisis is headlines that announces the threats of rising sea levels melting ice caps and widespread droughts are the usual these headlines serve as constant reminders that water is precious they also serve as a call to action shrija uh, there is a problem with the bandwidth so people have already seen who is shrija so if you if you switch off your video the video strength will also come into audio and people will be able to listen very clearly so you switch off your video and take on your audio yes okay sir yeah now it's better everybody knows who is shrija now yes yes child go ahead yes <laughs> guys i will get you go ahead child go ahead losing hope in a sea of bad news is not an option for the youth of today many students understand that preserving water is equivalent to conserving the future 
Fortunately, there are strategies that students can implement within their schools to promote water conservation within the academic community. So, how can students save water at school? Simple actions is equal to big water savings. By working together in the school environment, students can promote small but significant change in collective behavior that will ultimately lead to increased water conservation. Here are some helpful tips and strategies to promote water conservation in school, in the dorms, and within the institution as a whole. First, and the easiest thing would be to turn off the water while washing your hands. People wash their hands on average of nine times a day. If people, turn, if people turn off the tap while washing their hands, they can save an average of up to six gallons of water a day. Students could also report leaks to the appropriate authorities. Yeah. Students are usually the first ones to notice any leaks on the campus. A single leaking toilet can waste more than 50 gallons of water every day, while a dripping tap wastes up to 1,000 gallons of milk. Reporting leaks and following up to make sure that they're fixed is one of the most effective ways individual students can save water at school. Schools could also organize a composting system, landscape school grounds, and have water use audits. This concept is for the school to get a sense of overall campus-wide water usage. A physical review of property identifies wastefulness and looks for possibilities to increase water conservation throughout the physical structure on campus. Go low flow. Eco taps reduce water consumption by over 50% with no negative effect on the quality. And if current taps need to stay in place, then low cost tap aerators that achieve a similar effect can be considered. If the budget allows fit sensor taps, there are added benefits of going low flow because using less water should cut the amount of energy needed to heat the water and cuts carbon emissions. In conclusion, these tips for students on how to save water at school may not seem vital, might seem minute or trivial in the light of such tremendous environmental changes that shape our world. Fortunately, countless small actions made by individuals can lead to big changes in the environment and our community. Thank you. Very good. Very good, Shrija. Uh, do you promise that uh, we brought you on this global platform? You will tell all your classmates, your friends and everybody, let's save water together? Yes, sir, I will. I will for sure. Very good. God bless you. And you will also come in this Thank program you. regularly? Yes, sir. And you'll, for sure, sir. You'll bring other friends also? Yes, sir. I will. Give opportunity to everybody in the world so that everybody can grow. Everybody can grow. You know, we want to give opportunity to everybody. God bless you, child. Stay happy. Stay safe. Take care of everybody. Okay? God bless you. God bless you. Thank you for you too. Thank you. Thank you. Vaishnavi, good evening. Good evening, sir. I must compliment you. You were the first to come this evening when this Thank program. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Comes timely is always to be respected. So, Thank you, sir. Now the world is yours, the globe is yours, continent are yours, countries are yours. Talk whatever you want to tell them on what. Yeah, sir. Yeah. Yeah, sir. First of all, thank you for giving me such biggest opportunity, sir. Good evening, sir. So I am Vaishnavi here to talk about water conservation. So before I wanted to start my session, I wanted to say some of the proverb related to water. So we, our grandparents saw water in well, and my father saw water in river, and we are seeing water in taps, and our grandchildren and children see water in bottles or capsules so this may not leave the future generation before that we have to take some of the steps you in water to, you have to repeat this it's a very important statement yeah sir i really really love this proverb slowly, yes sir slowly, slowly. yes go ahead Thank you, sir. So uh, before these future generation, we have to make some of the steps. So I wanted to make it short and sweet. So here I suggest some methods for water conservation. 
in agriculture field i suggest drip irrigation is the most um, what to say it's simplest method for agriculture so nowadays agriculture field people are so so poor to see them so since we are sitting here and eating before their efforts are taken and we are sitting and eating so that seems to be very very poor and what to say i don't have any words i myself having my own organic farm and i started that that so was supported by my parents so and next steps is what rain water so nowadays water are waste what to say that is it has been wasted like anything nobody value water it's just like that nowadays water bottles has been sold in countries over in those days they used to have pots in water so nowadays water bottles are sold see how kind of uh, things are happening in this world so that seem to be shameful and what to say in this future generation so rainwater harvesting helps us in a house and while constructing my house i suggest to my father to have rainwater harvesting in my house so my father also supported me and asked me about rainwater harvesting we googled and uh, that method is really really you don't even have uh, that is very useful for rainwater harvesting so when we have any water so we can use by rainwater harvesting so please have that method in your mind please use that method it's very useful it's damn useful to our uh, house so thank you sir thank you for giving me such a beautiful opportunity sharing my experience with you sir and i wanted to thank my ma'am priya ma'am thank you thank you sir god bless you child and uh, great regards to your parents and everybody and uh, great uh, regards to your father particularly supporting your uh, idea uh, what yeah, so my father is my backbone he used to support me for everything even though in uh, while well joining while joining to christ university bangalore all were striking to my decision but he supported me and he left me alone okay yes. uh, what kind of organic farming uh, you are having what kind of organic what do you cultivate uh, so uh, it's like a green farm so it has uh, drumsticks like that uh, useful for uh, uh, cooking sir <laughs> okay. okay okay very good organic farming great child god bless you and yes, wonderful sir. to have all of you this evening with us so ladies and gentlemen with this we come to the end of today's uh, this particular webinar and these four little girls they have made a commitment to me all of you kindly come on the camera now all four of you because uh, all four of you should come in the camera yes riddhi where is riddhi oh she is missing after talking now okay okay all of you should say jointly we promise we promise we promise we will come we will come, we will come regularly regularly, regularly to empower to empower the entire world to the, the entire, entire world. world we want for for we want we want all people all, all people, people world over world, world over, over should live to live to live like one family like, like one, family. one family and we will bring and we, and will, we bring will bring our classmates our class classmates and friends also and, and friends, and friends also, also in this program in this program, this program. with lots of good suggestions <laughs> lots of good suggestions <laughs> God bless all of you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you so Thank much, you, sir. sir. Thank you so much, sir. I pray to Almighty because you are the future. You are tomorrow. You are the one. Those are going to bring happiness in the entire world, prosperity, growth, whatever we talk about. India is proud of these little children, these little kids. We at the age of seventy only we can send the blessings to all of you, and we want more of more, more and more, more and more. you all should do good to the humanity and to the universe with these words ladies and gentlemen world over wherever you have joined us a great morning great afternoon and great evening green morning green afternoon green evening 
and to everybody back in india our best wishes to all of you stay safe it should be somewhere late evening in the india but it's early morning over here in canada united states and latin america all the best take care bye bye thank you sir thank you sir thank you sir